Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome to episode 19. Is it? Is, it, is this episode 19? Are we up to that? I don't even remember. It's been that long. I think this is episode 19 of game programming. And I've, unbe- I've finished school. Like, unbelievable. Like, the joy that is in me right now is indescribable. Like, it's amazing. It's the best feeling I've probably ever had in my life. Knowing that, like, I was, I was eating dinner... Sorry, I was eating lunch just just like earlier today, and and I was thinking, oh okay, let's see, I'm I'm gonna have to go upstairs back to my room. What 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 do I have to do? And then the thought occurred to me, absolutely nothing. Like there is legitimately nothing except for you know this YouTube stuff that I actually need to do. Like the feeling is 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 heavenly. That's the only way I can actually describe it. But um, we're back. We're back, guys. This will continue to be a daily series from now on, as it was before exams. Um, so yeah, <laughs> sit back, enjoy, and hopefully, this this game will be finished before you know it. All right. So right now, what we've got uh, in the last episode, just to refresh your memories and mine, is um, is this this window thing, right? Um, with a bunch of tiles on the screen. Now the next step, and obviously, like this isn't necessarily the next step, right? Um, because we could do anything next. That's the thing. Like the order of episodes doesn't matter that much. Um, the thing that I do next, you could do later on. And again, the thing that I do a few episodes later, you could do now. Okay. But so the order that I do this game in is just a preference that I think would be better just for, just for me, really just, just for whatever feature I think of adding next. So what I want to do now is actually basically make sprites, right? Because I want these, these squares to be filled up with actual sprites. I want us to be able to design a a picture basically in a, in a program and then actually replace these colors with that actual, that picture. So thus creating textures and sprites. Now, what are sprites? If you don't know what sprites are, sprites are 2d images. Now they're not 3d images. If it's a 3d image, it's actually called, it's called, it's actually called a model. This is a 2D game. Thus, you know, we're not actually using 3D models, we're using 2D images. They're called sprites. So just remember that whenever the word sprite is used, it means 2D, two-dimensional, okay? Again, if it's 3D, if it's 3D, it's a model. Um, so what we actually need to do now is have a way to actually import a sprite sheet. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, making a sprite sheet. Now, the first thing I'm actually gonna do is actually um, remember the size of our sprites. So it looks like the map size is 64. It looks like we're multiplying it by 16 or actually dividing it by 16. So I guess our sprite size is 16, right? Um, I think so. Yep. I th- are we at 16? I think we're at 16. I think, I think the sprite size is 16. Okay. I want to, I want to make it 16 anyway. So we'll just assume that it's 16. So what we actually need to do now is create a sprite sheet. Now, what is a sprite sheet? Because our pick, because our, because our sprites are actually going to be 16 by 16 pixels, that's relatively small. So we don't actually want to have each individual sprite in a different file. We just want to have a bunch of sprites in one image. And then we can sort of sort through which sprite we actually want to extract from that image and use. That'll actually that'll actually reduce memory usage because we won't we won't have to load in uh, about I don't know two hundred files. We'll just have to use we'll just have to load in one file and that'll actually have the two hundred sprites in it. So great example is Paint.net, right? We're gonna make our sprite sheet in Paint.net. That's just what I'm using. Now, first of all, I'm gonna to go to image here and select canvas size, and I'm gonna make it 256 by 256. That is the size of our canvas. Now, I'll probably increase that in the future, I'm not sure, but for now, it's gonna be this size, hit okay. And now I'm actually gonna use uh, a plugin under effects called Grid. Now you can download this plugin uh, from the internet. Uh, all you do, honestly, is you just go to Google and you type in grid plugin paint.net. Okay. I'll actually link the plugin in the description because inevitably some of you guys will probably won't be able to find it. <clears throat> and again, I'm just doing this from memory, so I don't exactly know how to get to it, but I will find it and I'll post it in the description. So you guys can click on that and download this plugin. It's very useful. So as you can see, it generates a grid uh, and we can make the size 16, right? Because that's the size of our sprites, 16. And we'll just hit okay. Um, actually one more thing before we hit okay. No, that'll be fine. All right, doesn't matter. So 
what we've got here is this grid, right? And every one of these sprites, every one of these, sorry, every one of these cells is actually going to be a sprite. Um, so we'll start in the top left corner, really. We're not going to make any sprites today. We're just going to load this sprite sheet into our game. So we've made this sprite sheet. Now all we have to do is actually save. So we'll go to save as, and I'll actually pop over to my Eclipse workspace, I think. It'll be the game programming workspace. Um, and over here in Rain, which is the name of this project, right? We've got folders, we've got two folders here. I'm actually gonna make a new folder called RES. Now, RES, it stands for resources. And this is gonna contain all of the resources that we use. So stuff like sound, images, um, video files, potentially, probably not though. Um, any resources that are basically external, so not code, they'll all be contained in this folder. And in here, I'm just gonna name it Sprite Sheet. Actually, one more thing, I'll probably make a folder in RES called Textures. And then I'll just call it Sprite Sheet. And that's, a, that's it, as a PNG. Hit save. Uh, okay, so now that that's saved, now we actually need to load this into the game. And we'll do that by actually creating a new class. So under, under the graphics package, we're gonna right click and create a new class. And we'll just call it Sprite Sheet. And this class is actually going to be in charge of managing any Sprite Sheets that we might have and actually caching them, you know, to memory, to a, to a variable. Um, so, what we'll do here, first of all, is actually specify the path for that for a particular sprite sheet. We might actually have multiple sprite sheets because we might have a separate sprite sheets for stuff like outdoor graphics, uh, indoor graphics. You know what I mean? Like we might have multiple sprite sheets because we don't want to cram all like, I don't know, say we have 200 sprites. We don't really want to cram 200 sprites into one sprite sheet. That might get a bit confusing. We want to sort of be able to break it down as much as possible, but in moderation as well, so we don't have 200 sprite sheets. So we'll create a, a string here, and make, we'll make it um private. Private string path. And this is actually just gonna contain the path to our sprite sheet. So the, the system path. Um, we'll also make a private final int uh, size. And we'll capitalize it because that's a convention. If you're making something final, you usually capitalize it. Um, again, you don't have to, but that's just a convention. Um, we won't set it equal to anything. Yet. Oh, actually, no. We'll set it equal to... No, we won't set it equal to anything. Um, and we'll also create a private... Oh, sorry. Sorry. We'll create, we'll create a public int and we'll call it pixels. All right. So we've created three variables now. Now what we want to do is actually create a constructor for the class. So public sprite sheet. And it'll take two parameters. First one is the path to, to our sprite sheet, to that particular sprite sheet. And the second one is the size of the sprite sheet. And then under here, all we need to do is say this.path equals path and this.size equals size. Okay. Again, we've made the size variable final because the size of the sprite sheet will never change. So the size of the sprite sheet does not mean the size of the sprites, it means the size of the sprite sheet. Now it is square, as you know, there's the, the width is equal to the length or the width is equal to the height. Um, and it's 256 by 256. So literally it will be 256. In this case, we might have a small sprite sheet in the future. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then in pixels, we actually need to set the pixels uh, array equal to new int size times size. And we'll actually probably just use um, this one. And we probably also didn't really need this here. Um, so again, what this code is gonna do is it's gonna set this thing equal to whatever we input here, which you'll see demonstrated in a minute. Um, and again, it's gonna set this size equal to this size. That's how it's gonna work. And then it's gonna create that pixel equal to the size of our um, sprite sheet. So in other words, we're gonna have we're gonna have every pixel, every pixel of this sprite sheet mapped out so that we can access it. Now, the most important part is actually loading that sprite sheet. Whoops, um, we'll probably close this for now. Um, the other important thing, again, yeah, is loading that sprite sheet. So we've made a way to sort of create it in Java, but now we actually need to load that physical image file. So I'll probably just make a private um, method here called um, probably just call it load, 
load image or load, just load. Um, and what we're going to do here is again, just type buffered image, oops, buffered image, image equals image IO dot read. And we'll just go sprite sheet dot class dot get resource. And again, we'll use path. So what this is going to do is basically create a new buffered image object, which is basically an image. And it's going to set that image equal to the image of this path. That's all that this code is going to do. And we'll import this and you'll see that this actually throws an exception. So we'll just surround it with try and catch. All right. So what we're doing now is we're actually loading that image into a buffered image class, but we don't really want to deal with images in Java as a buffered image. We want to deal with them as individual pixels like we have in the past. Okay. Um, like we, like we have with these, with these colors over here, right? We want to deal with them as individual pixels. So to do that, we need to create two quick variables that we'll actually you know, dispose of eventually. Um, they're not permanent. That's why we're creating them in here. Um, so the width of the shade, so image.getWidth. Again, the width will roughly be equal to the size, but just in case we want to be able to do it from here. Um, and image.getHeight. So this is getting the height and width of this image that is loaded, which is found in path, whatever path may be. Um, and now we want to do, we actually want to set those pixels. So now we know the width and height. We want to set this buffered image into this, into this pixel array. And the way we do that is we just simply call a void method, which is image.getRGB. And over here, we need our start X, which is where we start scanning. So zero. Um, start Y. So zero comma zero is the coordinate where we actually start loading the image from because we want to load the entire image, right? Uh, width and height, that's already done for us. Um, again, this is referring to these variables. So this, this in turn, this basically covers the entire image. Now the RGB array is where we actually want to store those RGB pixels. So we, want, we obviously want to store them in this pixel array. So pixels, the offset of where it actually starts scanning is going to be zero. Again, it's scanning horizontally. So we want it to start at zero. And then the scan size is again, I, I just mentioned it scans horizontally. So the scan size will actually be the width. And obviously width is actually equal to height because it's a square, but it doesn't matter. Um, so that is the code that actually translates this image that we've loaded into these pixels. Okay. And that is legitim legitimately it. All we have to do is after we've created all this, we can just, we can just call the load method once as we've done, as we've done here. And it will actually set these pixels equal to the sprite sheet. All right. Equal to that sprite sheet file. Um, so that's it. Take down all this code, get ready because tomorrow we're actually going to look, look at a way to actually implement this and probably make a sprite class and actually manage individual sprites. But um, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please hit the like button if you did. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with a brand new episode. So until then, later, guys. Mm -hmm.